Annihilation is one of the creepiest, scariest, almost unsettling movies I've ever seen. One thing you need to know about me is that I really like horror, but I am quite the scaredy cat. But this movie didn't scare me in the usual, you know, the jump scare, cheap, it's not cheap horror, it's, it's true horror. Throughout the movie you feel this dread and this, like, creepy tingling on your skin because everything is weird and mutated and terrifying basically what this movie is about is um, the scientists go into this area which is sort of like a bubble that's growing from this uh, lighthouse where a meteor crashed and it's mutating everything inside this bubble all the in um, nature and what happens is DNA is actually refracted off the bubble and the, the bubble's caused the shimmer by the way and so this DNA bounces around and it goes into other animals we can see this crocodile which has concentric teeth like a shark we see human DNA go into the grass and it allows people to grow out of grass they don't, they don't move or anything but they've got human form and you know loads of other stuff it's basically mutating everything and it, it's it it's a really strange movie everyone i don't think there's one um view or one answer and that's kind of the point this movie is very thoughtful i couldn't stop thinking about it all last night it leaves open to interpretation basically um because there's some really mind freaking stuff in this. I mean, it just kind of blows your mind in a way, but not in the way you'd think, which sounds very vague, but I uh, you just have to see the film, okay? Um yeah, so you so we can see so basically this moves the movie uses a lot of colour and we see the shimmer is like rainbow and reflective, like oil or something. We see uh, the spores that grow around the shimmer. They're like really rainbow colored. In fact, the entire world is sort of, if it wasn't this mutated wasteland, it would actually be kind of beautiful. But it's sort of, so the visuals of this movie are very good. And even though it's a straight to Netflix movie, the CGI is also very good. And so we're kind of, I don't know about you and everyone else who watched this film, but as I was watching, I couldn't really, you know, take my time to truly appreciate them because I was just, there was just this crawling on my skin, and I think that is sort of the um, feeling they wanted to you to get from this film. Now, on uh, the note of the mutations, so yeah, as I mentioned, there's this alligator crocodile maybe a shark and it's albino and it's huge and it basically it takes one of the scientists and like pulls it into the water but they rescue it and then it attacks again but they shoot it down and it's got concentric teeth and it's and it's white and it, it it's really weird because as you might see from later on in the film this sh uh, crocodile isn't like too mutated if you know what I mean it's it's weird but it's not something shocking like the bear um, but it's kind of a taster and so later on there's this one of the scariest f uh, scenes and one of the most tense and unsettling and skin crawling scenes in movie history probably basically one of the scientists has gotten crazy and they had a theory where either something inside the shimmer killed them all or they went crazy and killed each other and she's sort of been repeating that now this is sort of her comeuppance because she's going crazy and so she ties up the other three and basically um I don't want to just explain the whole plot because one that's boring and two you have to watch the film yourself but basically um, the main character's husband is someone that went into the shimmer and has been leaving them 
clues sort of about what happened in here and so she discovers that that guy was her husband and so she ties them all up and early on in the film one of the characters was attacked by this mutant bear thing and dragged off and killed so now we hear her actually screaming again so the crazy woman um, chases after her and then we just hear the screaming stop and then we hear her scream and stop and then this grotesque mutant thing comes in and it's not it's dark yes but it's truly horrifying its face is sort of melted melted off in a way and it's just a skull but it's the skull is not a normal bear skull either and it's got more skulls growing out of its face and so this bear doesn't immediately attack them but he actually walks around and one of the most chilling details is the fact that he can mimic sort of voices so the woman that was killed he actually was the one that was making her scream so i you know it was pretty obvious that it wasn't her because we saw her die but this bear copies her screaming and it's sort of this painstaking it's it's terrifying and i've seen different um theories about what happens some are that her consciousness is absorbed into the bear and so the last memory she has was screaming in pain so that's what it mimics some say you know he just he gets it was mutated to be like a bird like a cuckoo or something that mimics uh, other creatures and some say that she actually became a part of him because you could see that the bear actually has another skull growing out of the side of its face which is disgusting but anyway this bear goes in it, it creates this really dramatic intense scene we see it cr sort of walking around it doesn't attack them it sort of scopes them out sort of um, spreading fear and so then the crazy woman who actually hasn't been completely killed comes in and shoots it and it attacks and it it rips her jaw off and that was probably probably the most disgusting death and then it attacks them but luckily one of the characters managed to break free and shoot it and it was just it was revolting it was completely i couldn't keep my eyes off the screen and i'd been watching this movie with my dad and i'd been like sort of looking over the entire film to see what he was thinking but i couldn't i didn't even see what he thought because my eyes were just glued to this creature and it's it just it's impossible to take your eyes off it because it's so creepy and so sinister and that's a really good uh that's a really good creature design it's not just a haha -ha, funny uh, creepy uh, scary skeleton uh, clown jumps out of the shadows uh. no this movie shows you everything it doesn't hide the, the yeah obviously it keeps some of the suspense by keeping the monsters you know sort of hidden but it doesn't keep it to the end it allows you to see them and that's really good and I don't want to show this bear because one to truly understand how freaky this scene is you need to watch the entire movie and two uh, I know some of you probably might not be comfortable with it and that's totally fine I probably still aren't and um, yeah what adds to this movie is this the soundtrack is very good as well it's very menacing it's very atmospheric atmospheric it's, it's the use of synth is very good it feels unknown it feels creepy and that's perfect for a movie like this where you're going into this unknown and it's changing everything so basically another thing about these characters is that each one is self-destructive as they say um and so they each had something uh they didn't have anything much to live for in a way except the main character so the lead lead scientist psych i mean psychiatrist she had cancer and she knew that she was going to die so that's why she volunteered 
the crazy one was a um, alcoholic. The one that died by the bear was a woman that had lost her child to leukemia. And the one that eventually turns into a plant um, wanted to feel something. So she actually like scarred her arms. And so, and so that's why they all sort of died inside the shimmer. But the main character, um, played by Natalie Portman, and quite well I must say, um, she isn't. Basically, she's gone in to find a way to save her husband. Uh, and that's the reason why she kind of survives. And in the end, and we'll get back to the end in a second, um, she actually gets out. So it's actually but the pro the thing is the character of natalie portman's character is self-destructive too because the whole plot of the film was that her husband has come back from this shimmer this unknown alien place mute or full of mutants and he's actually come back to her but he's a really weird he's internally bleeding he sort of doesn't know who she is or who he is um and so the whole plot is that she's trying to save him by finding out what the place is and so she but the problem is um the whole reason he came in was actually because he she was cheating on him and he knew i mean she loved him but she was still having an affair and so that's why she was self-destructive she knew he was doing something wrong she knew that he found out and that's why he had volunteered to go on this suicide mission um, and so that's why she was self-destructive, but she still had a reason to live because she still wanted to save him. Um, and so b by the end, we've had only we only have Natalie Portman and the psychiatrist left, and the psychiatrist, let me just say, is a very strange portrayal. She's sort of she's really kind of distant. She's very vague. She's like she talks very in a very strange way i don't know if anyone else uh found that but yeah so anyway she's gone in uh we f we found the lighthouse it's covered by these crystal trees this sea which reflect like oil it's very beautiful in a way but we know that it's not going to be good so we come we go into the lighthouse we see sort of vines these white vines growing everywhere we see a uh, corpse that's been blown up by a phosphorus grenade and a video camera and she plays the video camera and she sees that her husband actually uh, committed suicide and that the person that had returned is a clone or doppelganger and so she goes into the lighthouse where the meteor crashed and she sees the psychiatrist I don't even know what happens so she turns into this like thing which sort of this color there's just it's just a vortex of color in a way and then this vortex of color takes shape and becomes a clone of Natalie Portman and that clone just mirrors everything she does and she outsmarts it by putting a uh, phosphorus grenade in its, its hand then walking away so it blows up and she stays alive but uh the the mirror the copy it actually begins burning everything else and so the shimmer sort of dies because everything's been burnt away and there's been a lot of controversy about this uh alien thing the thing is it doesn't actually want anything it doesn't have it doesn't want to conquer the planet or anything it just does it just copies and refracts dna to create new stuff and the way i saw it it was sort of creating copies of our planet to sort of create a replacement but there are, have been a lot of theories so all throughout this finale my, i was just mind fricked i couldn't stop watching even though i didn't understand what was going on um so what i think pe people say that this alien it doesn't want anything but it copies life and it copies the wants of people so for example uh, the woman that was turned into a plant she wanted I don't really know to be honest maybe 
Maybe she just wanted peace. Maybe she wanted a place to be. A place to maybe like feel loved. And so she became part of the Shimmer and part of its ecosystem. Um, and the main character, when she meets the it, her clone, she doesn't want to die. She, uh, she wants to save her husband. So the clone actually allows her to kill it. And that's that's part of the self-destructiveness theory and so you know it's a very it's a very thought-provoking film you can have ages discussing it i don't really have anyone to discuss it with well apart from youtube i guess but i just wanted to share my thoughts and th the the real end where it's revealed that basically the main character meets her clone her clone husband and she knows he's a clone and she asks him like what's going on and it's revealed that he kind of does love for her and maybe that's programmed in because well the actual uh, husband died but and he told her and he told the clone to love her but I don't know but it's actually revealed that she has sort of the shimmer inside her because her eyes sort of shimmer and so does his and we already know that the shimmer mutates bodies and cells because uh she tested it she saw her cells were mutating she saw uh they say their skin was moving like liquid their fingerprints were moving and one of the most disgusting scenes where uh the past group including the husband actually kind of create an incision in someone's stomach and they see that their intestines are actually moving about like li living human beings like a worm a huge worm that is but yeah it's very revolting i i was i don't know i was just shocked and then we later see that guy with his i don't know his tube his intestine worms has become I didn't even know what it is. His his body sort of been ripped apart and stuck to the wall using all this mold and stuff. Like as if the shimmer inside of him had just grown and expanded. So yeah, those are my thoughts. You must you definitely have to watch this movie. Um but you know, if you have the guts. Not in a challenge way, I mean. I mean if you if you genuinely aren't scared easily and you couldn't actually take blood and gore and some terrifying things then you, you need to watch this movie um so yeah thank you for watching uh i know this has sort of been more of a ramble video um but yeah thank you peace out raw safe uh okay bye